and welcome to Epiphytic Cacti. So today I want to go look at these little seedlings from the fertilizer experiment and I've decided to just call that experiment done. There for two reasons. <laughs> One of the reasons is because these seedlings are being eaten by, I think there's like some kind of snails or slugs or like worms or something like that that's just really eating on them they've been in like this little greenhouse or whatever and you know I don't I don't really look at them all that often mostly because they're not really doing all that much there's I'm going to show something else after I show these because while this had like very minor impacts on these seedlings there's something else that had a much bigger impact so Talking about these little seedlings here, what I can actually see from this control group is that they barely grew. I mean, just barely, right? These guys are like, it's all limp and sad and everything because something is just legitimately, if I break this off, then we can look at this more up close. There you go. Something is just really eating, um, aggressively eating on these. It also got after some of my seedlings, so... Yeah, that's not great. I, there is little, um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually kind of a neat thing. Um, well, not in a good way though. In here, I don't know if you can see it, but there are actually like little slime trails that, that like run across the, the media. So there must be snails or slugs or something in here. I don't live in an area that has any real snail population. So if there are snails, they would only be like those little teeny tiny ones. So I'm guessing it's probably slugs. But it's it's pretty aggressively um, just chomping away on them. Like you can see here, you know, it's really just chomping away. There's like a giant gaping hole back here from something. I just got done watching <laughs> Shark Week. And um, this is really funny, but it reminds me of the, the cutter shark. Like a little cutter shark went after this little seedling. Um, I love Shark Week. But yeah, it's a... Uh, so this, this experiment, I'm just calling it done. Because first off, there's not really that much happening to these seedlings. And they're being eaten. And some of them are doing really terrible. So... Here's kind of the conclusions that I'm going to draw about this based off of the just absolute and pure like pfft, lack of growth from the control group. I would say that the fertilizers do have some impact um, and bear in mind that this is about seedlings. Seedling epiphyllum and epiphyllum from cutting like adult epiphyllum, they are different. So I, I do want to point out here is that while the Alaska fish fer fertilizer had like minimal growth, I actually noticed that these seedlings were, were in rough shape. Like they were just kind of like rotting and not just not doing all that well, you know? So I don't really feel like the Alaska fish fertilizer was the best, had the best impact on seedlings. I think it's great for adult epiphyllum, but I think that like for the seedlings, it, it didn't seem to, first, it didn't seem to have a huge impact on growth. And second, it just seemed to make them like less healthy, not more healthy. So the fertilizer that I use, the MSU fertilizer, I'm not gonna say the most, but one of the most substantial impacts on the growth. Like I can see this guy has actually grown a lot, but this guy actually looked really healthy even before. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to attribute that entirely to the fertilizer, but given that the control group didn't really grow at all, and this has this burst of new growth, I am going to say that the MSU fertilizer does seem to do something. You can see we've got like some of these dieback wilting seedling stuff happening here, but you know, it's not like, not in the same way as the Alaska fish fertilizer. So, you know, I can see that there's actually like trails going up this plant of that slime. So, you know, he's gotten tips munched off. You can see those little tips eaten off and stuff like that all over the place there. So, but I do also see new growth at the tips of all of those. Um, and then here is the last one in that group. I can see some of this, this like rotting at the base and stuff here. You know, but still yet there was there was new growth on this. So I do think the MSU fertilizer is probably a good fertilizer choice. 
whether that's for seedlings or even just for epiphyllum. It seems like it's a, it has a good impact and it's a, it's a fairly good choice. Uh, the generic fertilizer that I used as well also saw signs of new growth. So there were signs of new growth on that. Okay. There's also a lot of chomping. <laughs> this got eaten so bad. I mean, this guy just, look at the, it just ate that. So I don't know, maybe that fertilizer makes things taste better <laughs> because there was the significant chomping on these. But there was also some growth on these. So I will say that just a regular, just generic balanced fertilizer, you know, 10, 10, 10, nothing fancy, nothing expensive, probably works. You see all that munching probably works, you know, just as well as this, which, you know, the MSU fertilizer, which is kind of a fancy fertilizer, tends to cost more. So I think that, you know, if you wanted to go with the balanced 10, 10, 10 fertilizer, everything would be just fine. Now the Osmocote. Okay, so the Osmocote is really interesting because Osmocote, it being time released the way that it is, um, and it being activated by water and stuff like that, it, you know, I would have actually expected that maybe there would be like some kind of a substantial difference, but there really wasn't. I would actually say the two things that I see that had the most growth on them was the MSU and was the Osmocote. So if you wanted to go with just your, you know, standard like Osmocote time release fertilizer, I think you would be just fine and you would see nice results. As a matter of fact, after I saw some of the uh, little bits and stuff in this experiment, you know, so much eating, uh, just eaten. So they just ate them, <laughs> my poor little babies. Um, but I think that if you wanted to go with the time release fertilizer, it's also a very good choice. So, you know, for seedlings, like really, I think the Osmocote, the generic and the MSU were all really good fertilizer choices. And I think that, you know, if you just wanted to do it on the, on the cheapo or whatever and go with the generic stuff, you'd be just fine. And if you, you know, Osmocote's not that expensive either. It's time release and oh man, is it, it is not a huge hassle. So that's kind of how that went. Now I want to show something that had a huge impact on seedling growth. Bear in mind that pretty much all of these seedlings came out of they, they were all like planted at the same time, raised at the same time. They were raised together and everything. So by the time that I took these guys and did this with them, shortly after I did a second video, which was called like, I think, giving seedlings room to grow. And so by all appearances, when you give seedlings room to grow, they actually grow. So these guys were in very similar size to the ones that I was running the fertilizer experiment on. And I will say that while you can see there's a little bit of Osmocote in there, I didn't put that Osmocote in there at all when I transplanted. I actually just threw a little bit of Osmocote in these pots like maybe a week ago. So that's not anything of what's causing this, this burst of growth. This burst of growth is legitimately just caused by putting the seedling alone in its own separate pot by giving it room to grow and this wasn't a fluke this wasn't even kind of a fluke there was five of them that i did and all of them showed signs of substantial substantial new growth you can see this guy here he very quickly threw out like these two little nubbins and then they started to grow nice. This guy immediately started flattening out and everything and, and growing really well. So this is so remarkable to me as to how quickly these guys showed signs of growth like that. I mean, you can see that these, the ones that were getting all this fertilizer and everything, like they're dwarfed compared to ones that were just up potted, just dwarfed. And even more impressive than that is I actually have two seedlings that I micrografted. So I micrografted these guys when they were very young. They were not even really a year old. I, I don't, I don't quite remember how old they were. I think it was something like six months old. And these guys were micrografted onto Perscariopsis. Let me make some room here. There was someone mowing the lawn outside, so I had to give it a second here. 
Um, so what I wanted to show here is that these guys, this plant and this plant, these guys were micro grafted. They're so top heavy. Um, just looking at these seedlings being up potted and how much growth they put on, even just compared to these micro grafts is just absolutely impressive. So, I mean, to me, considering, you know, like the, the grafts are really supposed to grow so much faster. And so while these grafts probably have, it's amazing as to how quickly they, you know, the seedlings will actually just totally take off in a burst if they're just provided the room. And the reason why I can say that this is not a fluke is one, all five of these have this kind of growth, but I actually took all of my other seedlings and I called them out and I did the same thing to them. And all of them are showing the same kinds of signs and they are really, really, really um, just kind of putting the fertilizer experiment to shame. So at the end of the day, what I would say is that if you want epiphyllum seedlings to grow and, you know, to like grow better and grow faster, I think that it is a wise thing to do to when they are young to call them very well for one and for two to always make sure that they have enough room to actually grow. I don't think that epiphyllum seedlings mimic their epiphyllum parents that are grown from cutting quite in the same way. So I think when you grow them from seedlings, things are going to be a little bit different. And, you know, there's, it, it's interesting because you have to like experiment and learn and adjust for those kinds of things. And so I think I learned a really valuable lesson, you know, about how to get epiph epiphyllum seedlings to grow so much better and so much faster, just all on their own without doing any crazy fancy things like grafting or anything like that. I want to take you down and We'll, we'll have a go look-see at all the other seedlings and, and kind of what I've done to them. So here we go. You can actually see the little, you know, I've got like a little tiny sea of seedlings here. I don't have a whole lot of them anymore because I definitely called out just like a ton, a ton of them. But, you know, you can see like these guys, they're already having just this burst of growth here. Pretty much all of them are like that. They're just having this amazing birth, burst of growth after being moved up into these bigger pots like this and then being moved, you know, completely called out, um, not being grown in like groups of, you know, small bunches of groups and everything. So, but there you go. That's actually what is left of, I think, trays and trays and trays and trays upon seedlings. So here's what I've done with the seedlings that are younger. These seedlings are actually like a kind of a you know, pretty much like a year following those other seedlings or at least six months or whatever. So what I've done with those guys is I've really just totally called them out. I called them much better than I did the first time, like the first group of seedlings that you just saw, the bigger ones. Um, so I really, you know, while these guys are a little bit younger, I mean, I've just like really, really called them down, made sure that there is only one seedling per pot. I totally got rid of the ones that were just not, you know, like the weaker looking seedlings and everything. So I did much, much heavier calling, much faster. And I potted them where is one seedling per one of these little pots. And that is, I think, how I will just end up doing all of my seedlings from now on. So I hope that was really informative. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.